What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we are finally watching Interstellar. I am so hyped to watch this movie. I cannot tell you how long I have waited to finally sit down and watch it. It's been on my list of movies to watch for a very long time. I, I have heard nothing but great things about this movie. I've never seen it, I don't know much about it, I just know it has to do with space. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, I believe, is our protagonist, or who plays the main character. Um, I heard the score for this movie is absolutely outstanding, but of course when you have Hans Zimmer doing the score, what do you expect? Um, I believe Christopher Nolan is the director, another one of my favorite directors. I mean, this 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 movie is firing on, on, on all syllables. I couldn't even say that. I think, I think this movie is going to be really good. I've heard absolutely amazing things about it. I know from what people say that it's a fantastic movie. And I have unbelievable faith in Nolan. He's, he's never led me wrong so far. I love all of his movies, so I'm very hyped to watch this. In case you don't know, I do have a Patreon with full-length reactions and early access, and that's where you can get updates about what I'm going to watch next and stuff. So in case that interests you, link in the description. But without further ado, let's watch this movie. All down. Yeah, I need power up! Dad? Shit. Damn. So my dude is a an ambitious flyer. I guess maybe maybe a little cocky even. Oh. Yeah, no such thing as ghost, babe. Also, this girl said dad, and that, that lady at the beginning said dad. Is this her then? Is that like the future? It said my dad was a farmer? So they're a farmer family, but he was once like a airspace pilot or something? Whoa. Also the score in the background, man, like already so good. Hans Zimmer, man, you really are way too good. It's like such like beautiful symphony, but it's like has this otherworldly feel. Like it feels galactic or space-like while simultaneously enunciating the emotions you want it to. It's really, really good. We didn't run out of television screens and planes. We ran out of food. The world uh, needs farmers. Damn. So I guess that's what the blight was. That's why they were talking about the corn and stuff. So they ran out of food as well. Holy shit. It's an old federal textbook. We've replaced them with the corrected versions. Corrected. corrected. Explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. <laughs> Elves pouring resources into rockets and other useless machines. Shit. Yeah, one of those useless machines they used to make was called an MRI. And if we had any of those left, the doctors would have been able to find the cyst in my wife's brain before she died instead of afterwards. Wow. Wow. That's insane. That's crazy, especially because these are the ones teaching the children, like, later on, so... It's not even that... They're, like, rewriting history so that the kids focus on what they want them to focus on instead of all history, you know? Like, just ignore certain parts of history. It's kind of crazy. And so, yeah, I guess his wife's died, which is really sad. If it's binary, thick is one, thin is zero coordinates but from who like from aliens or <laughs> what like who gave these coordinates like you said because of gravity that's how they communicated it was through binary and it was coordinates but like who gave them or did anybody give them did he just happen to read it that way find meaning where there was none did you get those coordinates where's my daughter don't make me take you down again sit down are you what the fuck? Also, robots. They're old and they're and Hathaway's in this? Unpredictable. No way! So that's why Merv and them were talking about that... That and... That, that drone... As like an actual person. Because I guess they have... Either androids or they've somehow programmed... Previous people into robots. Lazarus. What is this? Michael Caine? What is happening? The same NASA you flew for. The same NASA you flew for. So he used to fly for NASA. That's fucking dope as shit. We're not meant, meant to find another world. To save the world. Yeah, for real. We're meant to leave it. We'll find another planet that you guys can live on. You won't be able to save this one. I love how real this feels too. This is a pretty accurate representation of what the future might hold. With environmental and climate change and all that. But something sent you here. They chose you. Well, who's they? Who is they, dog? Who is controlling the fucking dust in your house? 
Disturbance of space time. Another galaxy. No way! Get the fuck out of here. You give up on them, my kids. That's why Plan A is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a crazy mission, cause like you're giving up on the current human civilization to start a new one. It continues the species, but you forget all the ones that are already existing, which is kind of insane. It's a tough mission to go on about doing. But time works differently. Like they said the wormhole opened and they were like a disruption of space time. And so, I mean, we all know Einstein's theory of relativity in terms of time. I imagine he's going to age much less. Like even now, like they say, like if you go into the moon, you would age less. Like the time is different comparatively to Earth. So like he's going to go and time is going to have passed a lot more. This world is never right? If I'm understanding that correctly. Don't trust the right thing done for the wrong reason. We farmers, we sit here every year when the rains fail and we say, well, next year ain't gonna save us, nor the one after that. <laughs> Once you're a parent, you're the ghost of your children's future. Stay. It says stay, Dad. I can't imagine how tough that would be on a kid, man, in all honesty. Like to sign up for their only parent to leave for a few years. Oh my God, it's a watch, dude, as if as if the theme of time wasn't evident enough, he gives her a watch. All right, man. Don't, don't mind, don't make me leave like this. Come on, Murph. That's so sad, man. Don't make me leave like this, Murph. Man, the score in the background right now, too. It's so, like, I feel like it, another book falling, what the fuck? No, I was gonna say, it's so, like, uh, I don't know, it captures so many different emotions for me. Like, hopefulness, unease, unknown sadness like it's it's so well done it's so sad too because he's leaving his kids but like he's doing it for his kids and for himself too don't get me wrong he this is his life's dream and his work oh he no, checks bro my fucking heart no i gonna say like he he oh man like this is what he yearns for this is his life's calling but also because if he can find another world for humanity to live on, he can maybe save his children's lives. Everybody good? Plenty of slaves for my robot colony? <laughs> robot got jokes. That's so funny. God, what a gorgeous fucking shot. Bro, the sound editing for this right now. Like that unbelievable loudness from the rocket ship because it's unbelievably loud. But then they exit Earth and into gravity where there is no sound and it's just pure silence. Fuck me, that's beautiful. We'll be waiting for you when you get back. A little older, a little wiser, but happy to see you. Bro, bet money it's gonna be so much longer. And Dr. Brandt's gonna be fucking dead. Dr. Mann, well, he's remarkable. He's the best of us. This crew represents the best of humanity. Even me, huh? You know what? We agreed 90%. <laughs> Murph is a bright spark. Maybe I should fan the flame. Uh, dude, I bet you as well, because Murph is so, like, also following in Cooper's footsteps of being infatuated with space and the planets and stuff, and it's going to be so long since she's seen her dad, she's going to continue down that path. And, like, I bet you anything she's going to spend the rest of her life trying to get her dad back because she'll be without him for so long. 100%. I wonder if she does end up working for NASA. Like Dr. Brandt was saying, maybe I'll come. Maybe I should fan that flame. I wonder if she ends up working for NASA. That'd be cool. So a wormhole bends space like this. Oh, so that's cool as fuck. What a dope explanation. Okay. I'm so interested. You know what I mean? This is such a, not like just cool concept, but so well executed. You know what I mean? Like besides how well the movie is made, like just the story is so enthralling. That's unreal. I wonder how much work, like background work, Nolan did discussing with astronomers and astrophysicists to find out how all of this is actually done and how it would look. Oh, she's putting her hand there. That's probably not a smart idea. Every hour we spend on that planet will be seven years back on Earth. God damn! If we're in, we're out, we lose a little fuel, but we save a whole lot of time. So I guess, yeah, before they were saying about driving through it, maybe? Which is why they would lose so much time. But now he says, let's go around it so that we stay out of that, that gravitational pull, which will slow time down. Which will waste more time in terms of their inner clocks, but it'll save them more time overall. Which is a good idea. 
Because, I, I mean, I it, it's not a good idea to lose seven years, right? Because, like, again, what Cooper said is correct. Like, plan A is the main plan, that's why it's plan A. But also, like, Dr. Brand said he'd like to solve the, the problem of gravity by the time they get back. But if he wastes going through that black hole and seven years pass, if with only one hour, he's going to be dead by the time they get back. Dude, that looks insane. So they're just trying to land on Miller's planet. Get him and bounce. Is this Miller's planet? Wow, it looks oddly close to Earth, which is why I guess they said it's so good. Thrusters to slow. No. no I'm going to use the Ranger's aerodynamics to save some fuel. Just like the beginning scene where he had that nightmare about him flying. But I mean, he probably would have succeeded at the beginning if they didn't fuck with him. So right here, if nobody fucks with him, I have faith in him. Down was when the machine was easing at the wrong time. A little caution would go. And get you killed, just like reckless driving. Good work. Two damn bats. I got this. It's like talking to an F1 driver and a dude who only rides a bike is trying to coach him. Shut the fuck up. Let my man work. Very graceful. No. But very efficient. Efficient. Thank you. Go. Seven years per hour here. Let's make it count. Bro, ten minutes. Just ten minutes. No wasting time. Ten minutes would be a year. So fucking hurry it up. Although this planet has water. God, I wish it wasn't so close to the black hole, because it would be so useful. They could actually have life on this planet if it wasn't so close to that black hole. But knowing how space works, this is entirely accurate. Like, Earth happens to be in the Goldilocks zone that can perpetuate life, but considering the, like, trillions amount of planets and stars in all of the universe, there's, statistically speaking, billions of other planets like Earth. They're just really far away. So, I mean, this makes sense to find one, at least, that's close to Earth. So this planet is just water. That's a wave, that's like a tsunami, dude. That's a tsunami, get the fuck out of there. Y'all gotta go, dude, y'all gotta go. Bro, the data is not worth your life. Hands, get back here Yo, now! hurry up. Yo, Case, you're a G, dog. You're an absolute G. I don't care that you're a robot. You are a G. My man is hauling ass. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh. Bro, look at the size of this motherfucker. All right, remember when I said that we could inhabit this planet? Yeah, I lied. Get the fuck. That wave would fucking wipe out all of the civilization that would ever try and live there. Back here. The difference is one of us was thinking about the mission, right? Over here thinking about getting home. I was trying to do the right thing. No, you just wasted more fucking time, bro. She stood there and was like, "Go with it. if you fucking moved." What's this gonna come? We could have got there. A lot. Decades. Decades. Decades, bro. Fuck! Bro, if they had a team full of Coopers, this shit would have been done and efficient. Fuck! I've waited years. How many years? It's 23 years. Four months, eight days. Holy shit. Holy shit. So yeah, his son is now in his 40s. His daughter is in his 30s and her dad's fucking dead. Oh my god, that's so fucking sad, dude. 20 th he's gonna watch his kids grow up in front of him right now. Grandpa attended the ceremony. I really think this is the one. Murphy stole Grandpa's car. Jesus, man. He crashed it. No! He's a fucking grandfather! Oh my god. Oh, Grandpa died last week. <sighs> this has got to be one of the saddest scenes I've ever fucking seen, dude. Also, McConaughey's acting is unfucking believable as well. I'm glad they stopped that video. I was about to start crying, dude. Oh fuck. That when you came back, we might be the same age. Oh shit. And today I'm the age you were when you left. Oh, and there she is working at NASA. 
There she fucking is working at NASA. Look of evolution, but when you're orbiting a black hole, not enough can happen. It, it sucks in asteroids and comets. Just reminded me of the fact that I believe it's Saturn. Saturn's gravitational pull is what sucks off asteroids that are on path towards Earth. It just reminded me of that while she was talking about black holes being able to suck in a bunch of other things that would usually not hit your planet. She's in love with Wolf Edmonds. Oh, never mind. That's, That's not at all what I thought this was. Yes. Well, that's why she wants to go there to see if he's still alive. And love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. Interesting theory. To say love is another one of the dimensions, like time and space. Oh, never mind. This is on Earth. I'm gonna lose about a third again. And next year. Next year I'm gonna work in Elkie Farm. Wow. What I love how he even said the line that that Cooper was talking about when he was talking to his grandfather. The farmer's constantly saying next year. <coughs> yeah. I mean he said it. Might be the last generation to survive in this ecosystem. Cause like like he said before, Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen, which we can't even breathe. It's the trees and the plants providing oxygen that allows us to breathe. But with the blight wiping out all of the plants and the trees and all of Earth's Earth's life that helps provide oxygen, the kids aren't going to be able to breathe. He's been asking for you since he came to. We were trying to Eddie Brock? What are you doing here? What are you doing here, big guy? What are you doing here? Aww. Oh, for the love of God, please let them make it back. I really hope they get to meet again. Cooper and his family. I mean, I feel really bad for her, though. Dr. Brand not being able to meet her father again. Forgive me, but... Aw, oh, man. No need for him. To come back. Oh, the plan B. Did my father know? Was plan A never a possibility? He's struggling whether or not to tell them about the plan A. Being a lie. You knew. This was all a sham. Man, the score just became so fucking menacing. What? I was like, holy shit. Must be a cold ass fucking planet. Oh, well, yep. That answers that. Is that Matt Damon? <laughs> Damn, that's sad. Pray you never learn just how good it can be to see another face. Can't imagine. Although Homeboy on their team probably knows, considering he was on the ship waiting for so long. You have literally raised me from the dead. Lazarus mission! Lazarus. Oh, thank you, Cooper. You got it as well as I. <laughs> but he's been trying to solve the gravity equation for 40 years. Amelia, your father solved his equation before I even left. Then why wouldn't he use it? The equation couldn't reconcile relativity with quantum mechanics. Because he, he knew how hard it would be to get people to work together to save the species instead of themselves. Damn. For their children. Very true. Shit. About those we know. But that empathy rarely extends beyond our line of sight. I love how at the heart of this story is like genuine humanity. Not so much like surrounded by space. In order to save the but the real story is about the human condition. Considered the possibility that my planet wasn't the one. Wow. He just <laughs> What? Right, hey buddy. Why? Why? What the fuck, man? What the fuck was that? Why did he just do that? What the fuck, man? Okay, let me let me make something abundantly clear. You have a responsibility. What the fuck is happening? He faked all the data. Yeah. He faked all the fucking data. Kill this dude! Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Kill him. Please! Somebody would come and save me. This selfish fuck. Hey, fucking guy. For real. For real. And they were praising this fucking asshole, saying he was the bravest one of all of them. Fuck this guy. Don't judge me, Cooper. He was never tested like I was. Human habit. Egotistical, narcissistic, selfish piece of shit. I'm pissed, dude. I am very pissed off. Because I'm going to save all of us. For you, Cooper. Listen to my voice, Cooper. I'm right here. They're right there with you. 
This guy's a sociopath. This guy's actually a sociopath. I'm gonna burn his shit so he has, like, forcing him to go with her? Alright, that's a little extra, Murph. Bro, the stakes just got so fucking tense out of nowhere. Just out of fucking nowhere. Like, there was no villain to this story. Like, space was supposed to be the villain, like Dr. Brandt said at the beginning, like, nature isn't evil or malicious, it just is. Like, there was no villain, and then all of a sudden, just everything hit the fucking fan. They should have gone to Wolf's Planet instead of this fucking cunt. I'm too fucking stunned to speak. Well, the autopilot does. Not since Taurus disabled it. Nice. What's your trust setting, Taurus? Lower than yours, apparently. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so he's gonna dock and then fucking blow the ship up, and then they have no way back home. Please. What happens if he blows your life? Nothing good. Blow it. Kill yourself. This is not about my oh, life. It's gonna explode or some shit, right? Or there is a moment. Yep. And all of that debris is coming at them. They're fucked. Oh my god. Cooper, what are you doing? Docking. Docking? What? Excuse me? Ain't no way. I understand you are NASA's best pilot, but ain't no way. Yo. Hey, you ready? Ready. This is also what Dr. Mann said about humans versus machines, like not being able to Im improvise because they have no survival instinct, unlike Cooper, which is case in point right now. Lined up. Initiating spin! Technically, you're supposed to put your head in the opposite direction, not go with the spin. That is definitely how you black out, because all the blood will go everywhere. Cooper's got it. Cooper's got it. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Blacked out. Fuck, dude, this is so tense. They fucking locked! There's no way, dude. That was insane. Okay, we're out of orbit. My eyes are about to water right there. I don't know why. I just kept thinking of, in his mind, he's just thinking of Murphy's face. That's all I can think of. Although I like how Dr. Man met his end. His own arrogance was definitely the reason he died, and I am okay with this. We're slipping towards Gargantua. We're gonna let us slide as far as we can. Towards the black hole? What? Why? I think we can scratch our way to Edmund's planet. Well, what about fuel? Not enough, but I have a plan. Use the, that. use the gravity from the black hole and use that to propel you. Well, I wonder if they'll pass the horizon line here and they might get to finally see what's beyond the horizon in the black hole. Dude, that looks insane, bro. Like, Jesus Christ. That is unbelievably beautiful. Ranger two, bro, the G-force that Cooper is able to withstand is insane. <laughs> like, on a real note, I feel like the whole movie, all the other astronauts are struggling with the G-Force while taking off, but he just never was. Goodbye, Tars. Goodbye, Dr. Brent. See you on the other side, Coop. See you there, Slick! I also almost cried at that. My eyes are tearing up. Wow. Who knew Tars' death would be so emotional? Jesus. Okay. Nice reckless flying! Learn from the master. Newton's third law. <laughs> You gotta leave something behind. They agree to me. Ninety percent. <laughs> oh, he sent her there. Did he just sacrifice himself? Wow. Where the fuck is he going? Where the fuck is he? What's he? What is he holding on to? This is the fucking time stream. What is this? They look like books. Like a bookshelf. It is a bookshelf! That's his fucking house! This is how the books are falling over. It was him talking into the past? Was it? Is he now in the future talking to the past or some shit? Was he the ones putting over the books and that's why it's at stake because he was talking to himself telling him not to do it? Is that currently what's happening? Oh my fuck it is! 
Burn! I cannot fucking believe it. Burn! Is it subjective? Is that why he's only seeing his life though? And Murph's life? Like is he current is it subjective? Like he can only view his own time lapse and like his children's? Cause why wouldn't you be viewing other people from the world, I guess? No, don't go. Don't go, you idiot. Don't go! And that's why he writes stay. And that's why Murph was like, you think I'm lying. And now he says Morse, because that's what she was reading. Morse code. She did get it, though. She fucking said it to you before you left. Oh, my God. That's heartbreaking, man. That's unbelievably heartbreaking. Don't let me leave, Murph. No! 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 Oh, and that last book that fell. Oh my fucking god. But what is she clicking now that didn't click before? Oh, now she gets that it was him. How does she understand now that it was her dad saying it? What? Did he write something new? Did she see or not? You were my ghost. Oh, that line delivery got me. Fucking Christ. God damn, this is a sad movie. Lord. My boy! My boy! They saved us. Who's they? Who the hell is they? Thank you! On all wavelengths, but nothing is getting out, Cooper. I could do this. I could do this. Now this is the bravest man of the fucking human race, not Dr. Man, fucking Cooper. Oh, come on, Dad. Yeah, transmit yeah, do the message now! Do the message now! Get to current time and do the message now. Here. She won't understand its significance for years. They didn't bring us here to change the past. Change the future. Oh, they didn't bring us here at all. We did. Yeah, it's like us from the future. Yeah, so you guys already changed the future. You guys already survive because of this current event. It's you guys helping yourselves from the future because it's currently 5D. At least from my understanding. Like, I know he's doing this to make himself go there. But he's just saying, like, now he has to do it, as in, like, it's a causal event. Like, this specific event always has to happen in order for them to survive later on. Does this create, like, a paradox? I'm not 100% sure. They didn't choose me, they chose her. Murph? <laughs> she solves it. I'm gonna find a way to tell Murph, just like I found this moment. How, Cooper? The love, Tars, love. The watch. Okay, I'm coming Take down. the watch! No. Because I gave it to her. She didn't even take it because it has the answer. She took it because it was her dad's. And all that fake bullshit by Dr. Brand, and now she can actually solve it. They're not beings. They're humans. They're us. Yeah. Oh, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> get out of here! Mr. Cooper. Those two floating dots. They found him? What the fuck? He made it. Cooper Station. Cooper Station! Currently orbiting Saturn. What? Is she still alive? She is! She'll be here in a couple weeks. Let's fucking go! We found out near Saturn when we found you. TARS! It's a Auto self destruct T minus 10. <laughs> Nine. Let's make that 60%. Oh man. How is she ghost? Oh, she still has it. But I knew you'd come back. How? Because my dad promised me. Aw. Oh, fuck me, bro. You got me crying and shit, dude. <laughs> Alright, cause she sent he sent her. Setting up camp. With Wolf. Tars is hiding. They about to dip to go find Brand. Oh, they totally are. I mean, that's all they need, really. Tars and him. That's all it takes. Oh, and she can the light of our new sun. All right, and she has all the eggs and stuff, so she can repopulate the human species over there. That's how you end it. Oh shit, dude. That fucking killed me. Goddamn. Wow.
Holy shit, man. That movie was emotionally draining, to say the least. But that movie was unfucking believable. That was absolutely amazing. Like, beyond words amazing. That, man, dude, Nolan just never fails, man. He really doesn't. I mean, this guy has so many movies that are just, like, S-tier. You know what I mean? Just movies that you can't even imagine someone being able to make, and he does it. And that's not just to give him all the credit, of course. I mean, all of the actors in this movie did such a beautiful job. Such a beautiful job. Every single one of them. Every part that someone had to play was absolutely played to perfection. And then Hans Zimmer on the on the music was just unreal. I mean, everything and every scene where his music was implemented, it was just perfection. Genuinely. God. I mean, okay, we gotta start talking about certain things. Because, I mean, there's just too much to get into. I mean, come on. One thing I gotta say, man, Nolan is has to be someone who is just uh, infatuated with concepts and theoretical ideas because even Tenet as well deals a lot with time this one dealt a lot with time like it seems to be someone who is very interested in perhaps Einstein's theory of relativity but also just with space in general I think he's he's someone who's very interested in concepts because even in Inception as well you know the concept of dreams within dreams like he always his his movies are always such high level ideas and genuinely always executed so well. I mean, Nolan deserves all the praise he gets and then some. I mean, he's one of my favorite directors and this just continues to prove why he is one of my favorite directors. He's absolutely unbelievably, unbelievably talented. And the one scene that's currently, I mean, there's many scenes currently in my head, but one I wanna talk about is that, that scene where he gets back after they were on Miller's planet. They were there for not very long and 23 years passed by. Do you understand? 23 years is older than I am right now. He spent an hour on a planet, I wouldn't even have made it there. Like, I wouldn't even be born yet. 23 years. I'm not 23 years old yet. He spent an hour and it lasted longer than my lifetime. That's insane. And not to mention, when he made it back, yeah, his, um, his partner, the one that stayed on the ship, Romilly, wasn't it? Was it Nick Romilly? Yeah, Romilly. I believe his name was Romilly, I think. Um, he, I don't know how he didn't lose his fucking mind. I mean, he was on that ship waiting for 23 years by himself. He was alone for that long. That's unbelievable. He spent 23 years by himself. Like, I can't imagine, like, having to wait that long, thinking they might be dead or maybe not, but like, just the idea that it was so quick to him, but to Romilly, it was tw over two decades is unbelievable. Like genuinely hurt. And then when they get back and they have to receive all the messages, that scene was brutal. That scene was brutal. Cooper watched his son and daughter both grow up in front of him. He watched his son grow up. He watched his son fall in love, then have his first child. He became a grandfather and then the first child died. He had a grandson, I think it was, was it, no, Jesse, I believe was her name, so it was a granddaughter, I believe. He had a granddaughter that lived and died, but without even getting to meet her. It's unbelievable. Lived and died, didn't even get to meet her. And watching it happen, got to see his son fall in love. He now has a daughter-in-law, and he never got to meet them, to hug them. He had to just watch that through his screen. And then when Murphy gets on camera, and says, today's a special day because I'm now the age that you were when you left. Dude, just absolutely gut-wrenching, man. Just absolutely gut-wrenching. And Matthew McConaughey's performance in that moment was just unreal. Genuinely unreal. I mean, just the absolute raw emotion that he had. Like, not for one second did it feel like he was acting. I felt like I was watching a father lose the time he had with his children. And it makes it so much worse because we know how much he loved him. Do you, uh, loved them, both of them, Murphy and Tom. Like, if he was a deadbeat dad and didn't care too much, like if going to outer space and stuff was purely just for himself, then we wouldn't feel as much sympathy towards him. 
But again, like while he's out there, the reason he survives, hell, the reason he even relayed the message to save the human fucking race was his daughter, his children. That's the reason he made it through it. That's all he was thinking about while he was there was I'm doing this. Yes, I enjoy it. Yes, this may even be my life's purpose to go through space to explore. But the strength that kept him going were the thought of his son and daughter. You know what I mean? And like to be able to watch them grow up without you there. And then at the end where he's still the same age, what, maybe in his 40s and now has to watch his daughter die. Like, that's so sad. I can't imagine. I genuinely can't imagine. But just the fact that he had to watch it all through a screen and watch so much happen through a screen without having to be there is just is so is so sad. Yeah, like at the beginning of that scene, man, like he started watching it and he was really happy because it'd been it'd been a while and he finally gets to see so many videos of his children and just the joy and the absolute euphoria of seeing his children again just made him so happy. And then he slowly just starts to lose it and break down crying because it finally sets in that he hasn't been there for any of it. He didn't get to really see it. He hasn't been a part of his children's lives and that kills him on the inside. You know what I mean? That genuinely kills him on the inside. And it, it's so well done by Matthew McConaughey, how it just slowly inches in on how he presents himself in that moment. like the smile, the absolute happiness of seeing them, and then just the slow breakdown of the tears and just like everything falling down around him is, is unreal. Like honestly, what a performance. And yeah, I was saying it while I was watching it, but like, you know, the movie, the movie revolves in space and around space time and around time itself, but it's not what the movie is about. The movie is about humanity, about the human condition. I mean, even when he meets Dr. Man and Dr. Man talks about the survival instincts, that's why I can't send out a drone because a drone can't improvise on the spot because it doesn't have any instincts. It does what I tell it to do. It doesn't have the fear of death or the want for life. And, you know, and he's talking about like the last thing you'll see what we hear all the time, you know, evolutionary wise, like when a parent dies, what's the last thing they see before they die? And it's the, usually their children's face. That's the last thing they think about. And like, and then even with Dr. Brandt talking about love being another one of the dimensions that transcends time and space, you know, like gravity, like time and space to us, because we're three dimensional beings. It's a, it's not something physical. It's not something we can grasp. It's a theoretical concept. We can see what it does, but it's, you know, like the idea of time. Like if you want to get technical about it, time doesn't really exist. Like we put time exists, like things age or whatnot. Like we made time as like the descripting factor of it. It's like the idea of luck. Luck doesn't necessarily exist either. We just made a term to describe a certain situation, the same with time. But like the the idea of the relativity is so interesting and well done in this movie of how they're, cause that's the first thing I thought of. Like when we were at the beginning of the movie and he stumbles upon to NASA, obviously cause he himself is the one that gave the coordinates. He didn't know that back then, but he stumbles upon to NASA and they're like, and they start talking about the wormhole that happened to expand near Saturn. And then they're like, well, we didn't put it there and they don't just magically happen. Someone does it for a reason. Like someone does that. They don't just come out of nowhere. And that was the first thing I thought of was like the difference in time because other places have different gravities and different atmospheres and time is going to be different depending on what planet you're in and what the atmosphere is like. So that was the first thought I had was like when he goes through there, He's going to come back and everyone's going to be older than him. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder how much time is going to have passed. I didn't expect it to happen to this extent, but that was my first thought for sure. But uh, it was so well done. I love how much I love how prominent Einstein's theory was throughout this. I think it's so cool. And I like I mean, when Einstein presented that theory, it's unbelievable. I mean, like you can do it to this extent to explain it, but you can explain it just in the most simplest of terms like you you ever watch the clock right you ever watch it if you sit there and watch the clock for 10 minutes that 10 minutes feels like an hour but if you're hanging out with your friends an hour feels like 10 minutes right that's the idea of what relative time feels like is that it's it's different for each person depending on what's happening around you depending how your mind is functioning at that specific moment time is different you know what i mean so i think it was so expertly executed in terms of what relativity really is 
in terms of time and then done to this level i mean of course we have never experienced anything like this and i don't think we will come any time soon to experiencing anything like this but the idea that this theoretically could happen is insane you know what i mean like there's a lot of i think the one of the reasons why this movie is so i don't know has so much meaning is because it feels like it could be so real right even when they were talking about the blight and the food shortages from the earth and the environmental changes that's gonna happen to us it already is happening with water shortages and like ethiopia and stuff and even even here that we still don't have clean water in flint michigan but like we have the whole ocean like yeah sure but eventually we're gonna run out and food and once you know even climate change is happening now but like the more it goes the worse the conditions get and the least the lesser chance we have of surviving as as a species so like eventually yeah this is going to be a reality if we don't figure something out and i mean cooper is kind of what a lot of us want to do with it like to continue exploring to find other planets that we might be able to to inhabit but the truth is like that's also what i was thinking of when they did it they didn't have that wormhole like there's no planet in our galaxy that is inhabitable for human life yet except for mars mars is the only one that has the potential i believe to actually put humans on because i think they also found bacteria alive on mars and bacteria obviously lives so they're like it has the potential it's obviously not the same as earth um i'd mentioned the goldilocks uh, zone it's mentioned by richard dawkins in one of his books um you can read more on it in other books as i have if you can see the bookshelf back there that's the, yeah like to find another planet that is in that goldilocks zone that has the ability to inhabit our life is not that it's necessarily um improbable but us getting there is not happening because they are light years away and you hear the term light years maybe some people might not know what it truly means but it just means if you traveled at the speed of light it would still take you years in terms of traveling at the speed of light to get to those planets so there is nothing in our vicinity that we can inhabit besides mars so like even if we were to find planets like these that have the ability to sustain life we wouldn't be able to get there so i don't know how close we are to getting to a situation like this in terms of interstellar but it uh it, it raises a lot of really intriguing ideas and a lot of thought-provoking concepts and thought-provoking um human actions i guess and also can we talk about dr man can we talk about that piece of shit because let me tell you something every fiber of my being hated that man the most selfish and narcissistic and egotistical piece of shit and you could think like maybe he was thinking about the human race but the thing is the thing is is that he still put himself in it so it was said by his grandfather like don't do the right thing for the wrong reasons that's what dr man was doing dr man was doing the right thing for the wrong reasons he was like you know i'm gonna save the human race he had this very me first right this very selfish mentality whereas dr brand cooper they had family so they they have this and they had love right dr brand loved i think his name was edmund wolf right and she had love for him they have emotions outside of just themselves and it showcases in this and how dr man acts where he where he instead didn't have any family and he fully knew that he was going there to die and he like you said when i got there i knew right away this planet wasn't going to be the one to sustain human life and i couldn't accept it i can't believe that the planet i went to wasn't the one right just this selfish and self involvement self-sustaining idea of just him him being the one it was unbelievable i hated that man so fucking much i cannot tell you how happy i am that he is dead and how he died was delicio it couldn't have been it couldn't have been planned better i'm actually like i wanted cooper to whoop his ass and murder him i'm not gonna lie but it couldn't have been done better because he died due to his own actions the consequences of his own actions and his own involvement his own thoughts he was a very narcissistic and egotistical person he was and he died because of it he knew he wasn't incorrectly he still landed it he knew he shouldn't have opened the door still opened it dr brant was telling him do not open the hatch he opened it dead 110 percent his own fault nobody else's but his own and there is no better comeuppance for someone who is so self-indulgent 
to meet their end due to their own actions. So that was just beautiful. Oh, dude, I just, oh my God. Just thought of this too. You know how I was saying that this movie revolves around space and travel and time and science, but the true meaning of this movie is the humanity of each person. Now let me put that into perspective of what just dawned on me, is the fact that the entire ending of this movie could have been so different if they went to Wolf's planet instead of Dr. Man's. Now what was the reason they decided to go to Dr. Man's planet? Because Dr. Brandt wanted to go to Wolf's planet because she loved him. Not because of the empirical evidence, not because of scientific evidence, but because of the human emotion that Dr. Brandt was advocating that transcended time and space, love. And both Romilly and Cooper said no, they thought with their head, they tried to do more empirically based data and a going with Dr. Man being one of their best scientists that they've ever seen, the bravest man as they called him, they decided to go with Dr. Man to go on his planet. Right? They didn't use the human emotion to guide them, they used the empirical data, they used science, and it fucked them. Right? This idea of humanity and love. The whole point, the whole point of the mission wasn't for science, it's for humans. It was to sustain human life. That's the whole motivation. That was the end goal, was to save the human race. It's about compassion. If they didn't care about other people, they wouldn't go there. If they didn't give a fuck about their species, if they only thought about themselves, they wouldn't have gone on this mission, because there was no reason. If they don't care about other people. I don't have to save you guys, go fuck yourself. End of discussion, that's where it stops, no mission, no nothing. The whole goal of the mission was the love for humanity, for the species, for other people. Right? That's the whole goal of it. So, like, the just the fact that they had that, like, dichotomy of love and science-based evidence, like, that too, like, the reason they went to that planet, and Brand was still, like, they were there, they also had good evidence for that planet. Right? And we saw at the end, Dr. Brand was there, that planet looked real good. She was breathing the air normally. That planet can sustain human life. She was right. She was right for the wrong reasons, but she was right nonetheless. And the reason they decided not to go is because she was using emotion. She was using love, her humanity, for the reason to want to go there. Because she wanted to visit the man that she loved. Fuck. You know what I love, too, is that this movie, I think, was so unbelievably scientifically accurate in a lot of ways. But the part I love the most is when he flies through the black hole, the one thing we, we've never been inside, let's say, and we don't know what happens afterwards. He flies through it, and then finally Nolan's suspension of what reality is comes into play, and he changes what it's like. He goes through that black hole, and like we can't say that that's not how it works, or that eventually couldn't happen. We can't say it just yet. So he's like, this is how it happens in this movie. And he goes through the black hole, and then he enters a place where it's five-dimensional, where time is a physical concept where you can physically touch it and affect it. You can see a time stream. It's built there for him, which is insane. You know what I mean? Like where that mystical, it's a sci-fi movie, right? And that's what science fiction is. It's a fake story about science, real scientific stuff. It's much like, it, it's so, I don't read a lot of science fiction. I read like historical fiction. I do also like fantasy. I do also read a lot of nonfiction. But sci-fi movies tend to be pretty, pretty interesting, especially when they're done this fucking well. I mean, come on, man. And that's one of the, one thing I can appreciate so much is just how much effort and work went into this. Because you can tell they did their homework on how space works, on how time works, on how gravity works, how we understand space, how we understand our planets, our stars, our solar systems, our galaxies, how space travel works. Like they did a lot of research into this and I can be so appreciative of that because there's nothing I love more when a, when a movie shows its appreciation by knowing what it's talking about. Not just spouting bullshit for bullshit's sake or like kind of talking about something but not doing any actual research so they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. He went and he understood the concepts he tried to get as many people, probably, that knew what they were talking about to help with this movie, and then this masterpiece was born. And that's what happens when you put effort into what you're doing. That's what happens. This happens. This is the evidence that, you know, like, actually studying and knowing about what the fuck you're talking about ends up becoming something so beautiful. I also love how, like, they explained why Miller's planet, how time works so differently on it because it was so close to the gargantuan black hole and how gravity was pulling it in and like that's why time moved so much faster or sorry so much slower 
uh, because of their gargantuan black hole. That was pretty awesome. A very cool way of explaining that. You know what I mean? Bro? Something else just fucking clicked for me at the beginning of the movie. Like, remember when I was like, it's, it's a documentary kind of thing, and then I had surmise that the lady talking I was actually Murphy like his daughter because she said dad and then we open up with the scene and then the young girl says dad so I was like okay it's most likely her talking from the future but on top of that he wakes up from a nightmare of spinning out of control in his ship you know what I mean like it starts going crazy starts spinning and then he wakes up and then at the end too when he's like flying into the into that black hole and he makes it in that time Kind of the same thing happens where everything goes crazy, he ejects out, and like, the screen shakes, everything is all over the place, and then when they finally close down that 5D representation of time itself, when it closed down, the screen shakes, and then he, like, flashes to white, and he wakes up again from that almost dreamlike state. You know what I mean? Like, that beginning and ending kind of thing kind of really feels reminiscent of each other, which is kind of really cool. And I'm almost certain that that's how it's supposed to play out, like, they're supposed to be linked in that sense. I don't think that that's reading in too much to it because I think it's like both of them kind of involve or revolve around Murphy like Murphy wakes him up from that bad dream and she's like you know did you have that nightmare again or whatever and he's telling her to go back to bed and then like even when he wakes up again in that bed the thing he sees beforehand was also again his daughter I don't think I I'm pretty sure those two things are linked or maybe at least I think so <laughs> one thing I really 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 love is the ending of this movie man I mean such a well thought out ending like such a not only a beautiful ending but like i just mean because the whole goal of murphy's work after was not only to sus to sustain humanity but like the fact that her dad makes it back and she gets to see him again i feel like is her end goal personified as well as cooper's to see his daughter again like that was well and truly their end goal both of them you know what I mean? And like, and then at the end, her he give uh, she gives him a final mission of going to save Dr. Brand because she's stuck on that planet now. And then it ends with him getting in the ship ready to go with TARS to go save her. And I was like, fucking yes, dude. Like it sets up a second movie, but it doesn't need a second movie. We can just accept the fact that that's what's going to happen. And that's what this world is now. And that's OK. You know what I mean? Like, I really, really like that ending of of, of him going to save Dr. Brand. I think that's beautiful and then them getting to see each other again him getting to see all of the people still surviving like his life's work that whole fucking mission actually meaning something because he he got the message to murphy and then murphy putting in that fucking work her brilliant mind with the help and inspiration of her father figures it out and they help save the human race they help save humanity and that is beautiful oh my god yeah, you know what else also just fucking hit me when he's talking with Murphy like besides the line of him saying to her like uh, You know trying to explain relativity and he's like, you know when I come back I might be the same age as you and then of course they end up at the time being the same age and then at the end being Fucking way different in age her being way older than he is But besides that he's talking about being a parent and how much he loves her and he's like your mom said something to me That never really dawned on me until now and he's like you're you're the ghost of your children's future and besides the poetic meaning behind that statement of how a parent shapes a child's life even after they die how much how much a parent means to a child going forward literally being the ghost in their future but also literally in this movie how he was the ghost that she once thought existed when she was like there's a poltergeist in my room or a ghost that was shoving the books off the shelf he is literally the ghost of his child's future like so on top of the poetic meaning of a parent's emotional sentiment behind that statement it literally happens later on in the movie he was what she thought the ghost was he was the ghost of his child's future and that's insane God, this movie is so good. I imagine so much more of it will dawn on me the more times I watch this, but my God, was this movie amazing. Well and truly, just, just unbelievably great. Unbelievably great. This movie was phenomenal. My God. I don't know what else to say about it, but it was a really good movie. And I loved that. It was very long, but the thing is, it really didn't, like, it felt long, but I was never bored or wanting to do something else while watching it. I loved every second. 
every second of this movie I fucking loved. There was no moment in time where I was bored or not interested in the ideas that it was talking about or, you know, caring about the characters and what they wanted to do or what their future or past might hold, what their actions or consequences might do. Like, there was never a moment where I didn't care. So I think that speaks to how well done this movie is as well, is the fact that it's almost a three hour film, but like, you watch the whole thing and you love every second. It doesn't matter that it's that long. You love every second. And I did love every second. I mean, my God, genuinely amazing, genuinely amazing. But that is gonna do it from me. In case you don't know, I do have a Patreon. Full length reactions and early access, so if that interests you, I'll link in the description. But that's gonna be it for me. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Hey you guys, thank you all for watching that recent video, and I just want to give a special shout out to Oko Canutilla. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm really sorry if I'm not, but just want to give a special shout out to you. You've been subscribed to my tier one on Patreon for a while now, and I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for the support. Love you guys.